Inside the brain of Riley Anderson, a bubbly 11-year-old, there's a high-tech control room straight out of Star Trek. But instead of Captain Kirk, we have a quintet of quirky emotions at the helm, Joy, the hyperactive cheerleader of the group. She's the friend who drags you out for karaoke on a Tuesday night and insists that everything is super-duper amazing. Sadness. Blue, mopey, and constantly wearing a turtleneck that screams, I need a hug. She's the embodiment of your feelings when Netflix cancels your favorite show after one season. Imagine Eeyore if he had a PhD in Debbie Downer studies. Fear. Always jittery, like a squirrel on Red Bull. Fear's convinced that stepping on a crack will literally break your mother's back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Channel your inner C-3PO with a dash of Sheldon Cooper's paranoia. Disgust. The SAS master general who wouldn't be caught dead wearing anything that isn't fashion forward. She's your inner Regina George, rolling her eyes at the world's poor taste. Anger. Short, red, and perpetually on the brink of a meltdown. He's like Gordon Ramsay if you served him cold risotto, mixed with Donald Duck after losing a game of Mario Kart. These five emotional Avengers live in the headquarters of Riley's mind, operating a console that influences her every action and reaction. Joy's the unofficial leader, mainly because she's always hogging the spotlight. Her mission? Keep Riley happy. And to her, sadness is about as welcome as a skunk at a garden party. Everything's peachy keen in Riley's world until her family packs up and moves from the comfort of Minnesota to the urban jungle of San Francisco. Imagine going from the Shire to Mordor without a pit stop. First off, the new house is a fixer-upper nightmare. It's so old and creepy, it probably has a resident ghost named Carl who refuses to leave until someone fixes the plumbing. Riley's dad is MIA, buried under a mountain of work. And then there's the neighborhood pizzeria that commits the ultimate crime against humanity, serving broccoli pizza. If that doesn't scream welcome to hell, I don't know what does. On Riley's first day at her new school, things go from bad to worse. During an introduction to her class, sadness retroactively taints a happy memory, causing Riley to burst into tears. Congratulations, sadness. You've just made embarrassing first day history. Joy, in her infinite wisdom, tries to dispose of this sad memory like it's radioactive waste. But in the ensuing struggle, she knocks all the core memories loose. It's like watching someone try to juggle chainsaws while riding a unicycle, utter chaos. The core memories, the linchpins of Riley's personality, get sucked out of headquarters along with joy and sadness. With joy and sadness MIA, Riley's left with anger, fear, and disgust running the show. It's like leaving a toddler in charge of the family car, expect crashes. They attempt to keep Riley happy, but their efforts are as effective as trying to put out a fire with gasoline. Her personality islands, family, friendship, hockey, honesty, and goofball, start crumbling into the abyss of the memory dump, where forgotten memories go to die. Anger comes up with the brilliant idea that Riley should run away back to Minnesota. Because when life gives you lemons, the obvious solution is to yeet yourself across state lines, right? Fear and disgust, somehow convinced by Anger's fiery rhetoric, go along with the plan. Meanwhile, joy and sadness are navigating the vast expanse of Riley's long-term memory. This place is like the labyrinth from The Maze Runner, but with more candy-colored orbs and fewer terrifying monsters. They bump into Bing Bong, Riley's half-cat, half-elephant, part cotton candy imaginary friend who's as whimsical as he is obsolete. Think Olaf from Frozen if he were designed by Dr. Seuss. Bing Bang is on a quest to make Riley remember him, and he suggests catching the train of thought back to headquarters. It's a rickety ride that makes the night bus from Harry Potter look like first class on Emirates. Our trio of misfits, Joy, Sadness, and Bing Bong, embarks on a series of misadventures that rival the exploits of Indiana Jones. They take a detour through Dream Productions, the Hollywood of Riley's mind, where her dreams are made. Imagine a cross between Inception and The Muppet Show. They even manage to create a nightmare involving a giant, broccoli-wielding clown, which is basically the stuff of every kid's worst fears. Just when they catch the train of thought, another personality island collapses, derailing their plans, literally. Joy, desperate to get back to headquarters, decides to ditch Sadness and takes a recall tube, a decision as misguided as Frodo trying to take the ring to Mordor Solo. But the ground crumbles, plunging Joy and Bing Bang into the memory dump. Down in the dump, literally and figuratively, Joy discovers a sad memory of Riley losing a hockey game. Initially a disaster, it turns into a happy memory when Riley's parents and friends comfort her. It's a lightbulb moment for Joy, sadness is crucial for Riley's emotional balance. Sometimes, you need to feel blue to appreciate the rainbows. In a heart-wrenching turn of events, Joy and Bing Bang try to use Bing Bong's sun-powered wagon rocket to escape the memory dump. It's as whimsical and ineffective as it sounds. 
After several failed attempts, Bing Bang sacrifices himself by jumping out of the wagon mid-ascent, ensuring Joy makes it out. Cue the waterworks. Back in action, Joy reunites with Sadness. They rush to headquarters to find that Anger's brilliant plan has incapacitated the console, throwing Riley into a numb, depressive state. She's already on a bus to Minnesota, which is a one-way ticket to running away from her problems. In a twist no one saw coming, except maybe Joy, in her newfound wisdom, she hands the reins over to Sadness. Sadness reactivates the console and prompts Riley to return to her parents. Riley, now fully in touch with her feelings, tearfully confesses that she misses her old life. Her parents, in a rare moment of Pixar perfection, embrace her and admit they miss it too. With the console back online, Sadness reinstalls the core memories, transforming them from purely happy to bittersweet. It's a revelation, emotions can be complex, and that's okay. The new core memory created is a rich tapestry of happiness tinged with sadness, symbolizing Riley's growth and acceptance of her new life. Fast forward a year, and Riley has adjusted to San Francisco. She's made new friends, picked up new hobbies, and even embraced the weirdness of California pizza. Her personality islands are back, stronger and more vibrant than ever, reflecting her multifaceted emotional landscape. Inside headquarters, the emotions have a newly expanded console to accommodate their teamwork. It's like the Avengers assembling after realizing they're stronger together. Riley's 12 now, and her emotional team is ready for whatever middle school throws their way.